things people Gluten always question. have questions about. Mm -hmm. Gluten. Gluten. Mm. Gluten. Let's go about gluten. Do you want me to wait for you to finish that <laughs> until I start? <laughs> or are you just going to be chomping down? <laughs> you tried to make it fast just now and you still had a bunch in your mouth. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're funny. That one was super sweet, by the way. Uh, those have been so good. I've been loving them. Ready? Shall yeah, we? Go. Hello everybody, welcome to Break Fresh. I'm Lacine, aka The Pink Coconut, and this is Coop, aka Inspired by Coop. Uh, today, we just decided we're going to be talking about gluten. We know you guys have a lot of questions about it, and we always get questions about gluten because we personally don't eat it, so yeah, we'll just jump right into it, I guess. Um, what is gluten? Gluten is a protein, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a binder. A binder gluten is what holds and and creates bread. A lot of people like bread, so it gives it that sort of stretchy, doughy sort the of elasticity. Texture. Elasticity, yeah. Um, what helps hold its shape? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's gluten found in? Barley, rye, wheat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people might be confused about whether or not oats are gluten containing. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer I've looked it up before. The answer is that oats do not have gluten, but Oats are typically grown around uh, wheat or gluten-containing mm. items, um, and so it can be cross-contaminated. So if you are getting oats that are certified gluten-free, yeah. that means that it's grown like on its own and it can't be and sort of contaminated. Hasn't gone in the same factory. Right? Yeah, no, totally okay. separate. So that's why it can be certified, mm. but, but on their own, no, they're not gluten-containing. Yeah. Um, so what are the, I guess, effects of gluten, you know, why we don't eat them? A lot of people don't know that they actually are allergic or are sensitive to gluten, and that's because the symptoms can sort of mimic that of other illnesses. Yeah, easy. Um. Like diarrhea, diarrhea constipation. Bloating, um, acne, psoriasis, mm. um. Asthma. Asthma. There's also Autism. That's a huge one, especially because yeah. autism is on the rise and so yeah. many of us eat gluten-containing mm. items without really realizing. I mean, if no one tells you what gluten is, you don't know what gluten is. Yeah, but a lot of people are just like, oh, well, I can handle it. But the moment that you break away from gluten products or, um, and you give yourself like a month, two months, mm -hmm. go back to eating a gluten and any mm. form of gluten or and whatever food that contains gluten mm -hmm. in it, Oh, you feel the you yeah. feel the reaction of your stomach straight away. I think yeah, exactly because we eat so much of it, you can never just you know. Well, you build an intolerance towards it. Yeah, well, and not even always that. Sometimes you just get so used to feeling the way that you do. Yeah. So you're not really intolerant. You're just like, oh, well, I'm always tired, or my yeah. skin's just bad, or or whatever. But really, you're intolerant to a lot of the foods that you're eating, yeah. and they're causing you to feel bad. Yeah. Um. Well, the yeah. natural structure of protein, I mean, of gluten is is something that had been changed and altered in the 19 in 1950 by so a, a, a scientist a doc wow. called dr norman Boulay. wow um, that's not even 100 years ago no it wasn't at all so um, so he took wheat and like modernized it like made it the wheat that we eat today yeah he modified it he modified it so he's able to grow a higher yield in okay. a quicker amount of time i was just going to ask you why he did that yeah there. and apparently it was he did it for to feed more it was more like a cheaper crop and you can feed more children yeah. so there's more people in mexico people in africa those are the type of places that they mm. were shipping all of this you know that's interesting because food. also you'll find when you look throughout history that mm. there are certain people more susceptible to having gluten intolerances mm. but when you start to look at the maps and how food has changed mm. you'll start to see that for instance in china in africa people weren't as likely to have gluten intolerances but now they're starting to switch out their their rices that they were eating more mm. of in place of wheat products and mm. now you're seeing a rise in these gluten intolerances yeah see the thing is the the complexity of the gluten mm. is it's too it's too complex for the body to break down mm. so basically gluten in its original um structure which is acorn that's the original wheat acorn is the original wheat yeah okay is fragile and it only takes between eight and 12 minutes to break down oh wow whereas the new 
gluten or mm-hmm. new gluten pro- um, protein is so complex it takes around six to eight hours to break down. Wow. That's, I don't even know the percentage of how much, <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah. And then if you think about... This is why a lot of people have IBS, irritable bowel or, syndrome, yeah. gone. No, I was just going to say, if you start to think about like how much wheat, how much gluten we do actually consume in the standard American diet. Because I remember actually when I first moved to London and you asked me if I ate um, like wheat or gluten and I was like, no, because I honestly, like I I didn't realize because Mm -hmm. I didn't know what wheat was, I guess. Like I suppose if I stopped to think about it, I could say, okay, this is wheat. But you asked me a question and I said, no, I don't eat those things. And meanwhile, I was eating pasta. I was eating crackers. Mm -hmm. I was eating bread. I was eating... I like mean, pieces. pizza, you can even find, a lot of people don't realize you can find gluten or wheat in things like soy sauce or ketchup because sometimes they'll use it as a stabilizer yeah. and they don't always, you know, it's not going to be listed as gluten or as wheat. Like, well, it's also added in beer. It's yeah, added, beer is, yeah. It's also added in, um, I don't know, like coloring for food, mm. flavoring. So it's, it's one of those um, sort of creepy ingredients because it's, mm-hmm. it's in everything. And so, you know, which kind of just brings us back to, of course, people are having a hard time being <clears throat> diagnosed because it's literally in everything, yeah. you know? And so I think people then say, okay, well, if I can't eat bread, if I can't drink my beer, if I can't have pasta, if I can't have crackers, what do I eat? <laughs> and it always comes back to the same thing. Mm-hmm. Fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, yeah. nuts, and seeds. I mean... We have long gone here and rambutan, and there's lots of things that aren't going to make you feel that way. I mean, I know I used to suffer with various things, and who knows? Maybe I did have a bit of a gluten intolerance, because most of us do, because like you said, it's not natural. Your no. body can't break it down, and you're constantly sort of weighing yourself down, yeah. because your body's trying to like work for you. But I mean, how everything is set up is you, they want people to believe that you shouldn't eat fruits because of the sugar content. Mm. Not realising that when you're eating your, your, your pasta, when you're eating your potatoes, when you're eating your breads, that has a higher glycemic index mm. than any of the other fruits that mm-hmm. you're eating. So what you've consumed in your, your breakfast, which people are going to have toast with some yeah. eggs, or we're gonna, um, what you're drinking throughout the day, like mm-hmm. your sodas, what you're having for lunch, what you're having for dinner. Once it's, it's actually broken down. When it's broken it? down, how much... Um, sugars that you've actually consumed in comparison to if we both just smashed this whole yeah. platter right now it's way higher than than consuming fruits so when people look at fruit as just oh no if you eat too many of those fruits then that's going to mm-hmm. bring your sugar levels far too high mm-hmm. no what you're eating and drinking for the whole day mm-hmm. is way more than yeah. what we did if we ate these yeah i think you're right but i think that also I haven't looked at the food pyramid in so many years because I don't pay mind to it because of the way we eat. We really eat in abundance. But I think, doesn't the food pyramid say that you should have a certain amount of like grains and and like wheat products Uh at the bottom? So it's really the base of people's diet. Mm -hmm. So I think that no one is stopping to think about wheat or gluten because from the from the start, that's what they're saying to eat. Yeah. But it's going to have even more adverse effects on younger people, huh? Because, like, like, if we started to feed wheat and gluten to our baby, it's going to affect her more because her... It's going to break down our digestive... Um, uh, System? Yeah, of course. I mean, her gut flora is just going to be... It's going to slowly deteriorate. Mm-hmm. And then she'll become a lot more prone to allergies. Yeah. For instance. Well, I guess, and you can talk about that really quickly, but because... So people who have gluten sensitivities, like the, the main, I guess, one would be celiac disease. Mm-hmm. And that's when your small intestine um, starts to like have holes in it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And so it can't properly absorb nutrients and it can't properly like nourish your body. Um, and I guess it goes back to what you were saying, though, even about irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. is because it all takes place in your gut. It all play, takes place down here. Yeah. But people don't seem to realize that cells... It cells regrow. Mm-hmm. But if you're consuming foods that are still going to continue to damage it, uh-huh. then it will never get better. Mm-hmm. But it's also knowing what foods contain gluten, what drinks or And a lot of us don't, gluten. like you yeah. said. I'm, and I guess if you're saying it's a lot of eating of the same foods and it's not going to get better, it's kind mm-hmm. of like, you know, if you get a cut and your body creates this scab for you and you rip the scab off, it's going to start bleeding mm-hmm. again. And it's sort of the same thing. If you never remove those foods, your body can't rebuild itself. But again, it does come down to knowledge of what those foods are. And I think, I think it's also fair to say that a lot of people take it as a joke. 
-hmm. because there's always new fads with food and because there's always something new that people are learning or new research being done, a lot of people say, you know what, forget this. There's too much to keep up with. What's true? What's not true? Mm -hmm. Why is this a problem? Now, I know recently enough, I saw some sort of meme that said something along the lines of like, oh, like gluten is the new like bad guy you know, what's going to be next. And, yeah, and the yeah. person who posted it was just like, oh, I'm tired of this. Well, you got a free money, a gluten. That's another one. Saw, <laughs> you know? and it, but like, to be fair, it just becomes this big joke. So mm. people don't take it seriously. But then, you know, they're saying, again, I'm tired. My skin is bad. Mm. I'm bloated. So many people are bloated. I have an upset stomach. I have diarrhea. I'm constipated. Maybe when you go to the bathroom, it smells. None of that is normal. Yeah, it warps you from iron too. Uh, yeah, it can cause anemia, can't it? And that's because your it, your body can't absorb nutrients from food. So even if you're eating it, your body can't do anything with mm-hmm. it. And it's all to blame mm-hmm. on these gluten-containing foods. Especially when they add yeast to it. It makes it even worse. But what can people... Like substitute with, huh? What can they substitute with? Well, I mean, again, we eat a diet really high in fruit and veg. But mm-hmm. also, I love buckwheat. Buckwheat is actually a seed of a grass. Um, and why should they smash buckwheat? It's so I've, good. I really like buckwheat. We make porridge. We make bread. We make pancakes. I've made waffles. And you can look on my blog, um, lacingandthepinkcoconut.com. I have some recipes there. Otherwise, on my Instagram, I have pages. Uh, recipes, sorry. Um, but buckwheat is really nice um, as a substitute. And to be fair, it's it's my most favorite one. I like knowing that it's a seed. And it works really well. It tastes really nice. Yeah. Also spelt, though. Just like we said before. Before it's is a naturally occurring hybridization, so your body can still break it down quickly. Yeah. And spelt's amazing. You can make muffins and breads and different things like that because it still has that elasticity. Wait, do we talk about that? Hold on. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> about spelt? Yeah. Mm. Spelt being um, a naturally occurring hybridization. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, you could use spelt. You could use buckwheat. Um, and, and those would be my, Spelt, my by go-to. Spelt, does have gluten in it. Yeah. But it's much more fragile. Also, with spelt, if it's a bread and it's sourdough spelt, it's even more fragile and it's more... It's, it's the, the structure of the gluten. Mm-hmm. It's the most... It's the closest to the original um, gluten structure of Encorn. Okay, so mm. sourdough spelt sourdough would spelt. be the absolute best sort of replacement you could find for yeah. whatever bread that you're currently yeah. eating. And it tastes if, delicious. Exactly. I've had it before. I think it's so, I think it's, I wouldn't notice the difference. Yeah. As long as like, oh, that's sweet and that's spelt. And you can find spelt, I mean, we're in London, but we're finding it more and more places. Whole Foods, Planet Organic, we see it at the farmer's market even, they make sourdough spelt bread. Yeah. Um. So... Yeah, it's not like there aren't options that are way better and that are easily accessible mm. to people. Um, yeah, I mean, I really think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. There's not much else to say about it. Don't eat gluten. It's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's tons of replacements. All you have to do is look for them, right? We'll do more of these sorts of episodes where we can talk about different sort of like foods so that you guys can understand why you should or shouldn't be eating something. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, share, and we'll be back with another episode next Sunday.